Hi friends, it's Carolyn Zook here with C Zook Stitch and today is Saturday, November 2nd, 2024. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch. I'm really glad that you are here spending part of your day or your evening with me. Merry Christmas. I'm just kidding. It's November 2nd. We had Halloween. I am ready for Christmas. I know Thanksgiving uh, for Americans anyway, for those in the U.S., I should say. Um comes in between and I love Thanksgiving I do it's kind of like it's Christmas up until Thanksgiving and then it's Thanksgiving and then it's Christmas again um <laughs> I haven't taken down Halloween yet that's on my to-do list this weekend Halloween was on Thursday um we were very rainy and quite chilly um now I know in certain parts of the world 50 degrees Fahrenheit is not that chilly um, but when it's raining, um, and it's 50 at the start of trick or treat, and it's just raining most of the time, um, that dampness gets into your bones and it is very chilly. So I was concerned. Um, I ended up having 38 trick or treaters, which is pretty good. Um, I do think it's the low, like I don't get hundreds and hundreds or anything. I think the most I've ever had was 50 here at this house. And so it's usually between 40 and 50. So I had 38, which I thought was pretty good. It was a very slow start. Um, my neighbors came over with their little girl and then like half an hour went by. And then my other neighbors came over with their two little girls and then more time went by. There were a lot of groups, which kind of upped. I, I do keep track. I have a tally <laughs> She by my front door. I come from a long line of record keepers. I have librarians and teachers um, in my family. So we like record keeping. Um, now I don't track it year over year, which I should, that's a lot of data I've wasted. But, um, anyway, I had 38. It was fun. It was good. Um, a lot of cute costumes, even though older kids were really nice and dressed up and one didn't, and he's like, can I still have one? I'm like, yeah, you're out in the cold and the rain. <laughs> like you're still doing the work. So that was fun. Um, thank you all for your comments about how I sound so much better and all that good stuff. Um, I think it was this week. Yeah, it was this week. I had my follow-up appointment and I am officially pneumonia free. <laughs> Boy, that took a long time. It took about seven weeks. I still do cough once in a while, but I'm so much better. And I think I even said last week, like, I feel so much better. And my follow-up appointment confirmed that the, the pneumonia is completely gone out of my, um, out of my lungs. And so, yeah. And then literally, I'm not even joking. This week we get an email, um, on campus. I teach at a college campus, um, <laughs> that they've had several students who have tested positive for pertussis or whooping cough. So whooping cough apparently is being spread around campus. So I'm like, that's just what I need. Um, <laughs> so anyway, it's just, you know, we're doing what we can. It's November. Um, we are, we just finished week nine. So we'll be starting week 10 out of 15. So we are in the home stretch. Students are tired. Professors are tired. <laughs> Not going to lie. But we are getting there. It's been a great semester. I have great students, um, and I feel like we're doing some great work. I hope the students feel the same. But anyway, that's the update. Um, oh, wait. It's November. I love November. Um, I love the Burr months, October, November, December. Um, I also love the Airy months, January, February. I love the winter months, fall, winter. Um October stats. I don't think I did stats for September, but anyway, let's do October. Um, my total stitching time in October was 95 and a half hours. So that's pretty good. I started the month with 68 whips. And as you know, if you've been following along, I uh, ended the month with 64 whips. I had no new starts. Yay. Um, and I finished four. So see if you can remember all four along with me. Um, October went really fast. So I feel like I just finished these, but we finished home of a needle worker. We finished trust the universe, black cat season and our hearts. So those are the four we finished. We did not finish flower birth sampler in October, but stay tuned for an update on that. 
Okay, let's get into it. So my 25 seven piece for the month of October was Ghost Pumpkin by La Di Da. This is an exclusive from Garon. Sorry about the glare. Um, that we got at Stitching in the Wild, or you can purchase um, at Stitching in the Wild. And I purchased it. A bunch of us started it there at the retreat uh, in September. It came, or it didn't come with, but you could buy the fabric and the thread pack separately, which is what I did. So I stitched on a little bit at Stitching in the Wild, and then this is my 25-7 piece for the month of October. So this is where I got to. Um, it's almost done. I'm going to try to finish it this month um, just because it's not a super big piece. It's 91 high by 71 wide. There is a lot of stitching in this pumpkin, of course, but um, it's not a very big piece and I love it. And won't it be fun to have it FFO'd? I'm thinking uh, um, a stand up. Um, would that be cute to have for next year? Um, and I don't know that I'm going to put anything in up here. It has the date and some stars to like fill in that space. And originally I'm thinking, oh, I could put some charms in, but I don't know that it's going to need anything. So I may just leave it blank. Uh, but that is where I got to. And I actually worked on it last night, November 1st, Friday uh, as well, because I completely forgot to change over my 25 seven piece. I just wasn't thinking this was on the Q snap. I'm probably going to leave it on the Q snap because I do want to try to finish it later this month. Um, just cause it's almost done. Or I could put it on my year of whips for next year and finish it. I'll have to decide. I'm trying to be my year of whips for next year. I think I only have 10 pieces. And if I add this one, that will be 11. And because you have to finish half of the ones you put on your list, that means I need a 12th one, and I don't know if I want to do that. So I think I can finish it this year. So this is called Ghost Pumpkin by La Dida, and this also, La Dida is the um, Garan um, focus on a designer for the month of November. So that works out for that too. So I think it'll come out later this month. I'm I'm excited to get that, get that going uh, or get that finished. Then I pulled out Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Uh, by Carriage House Samplings. This is what it will look like when it's all done. I'm over here on block number five and we are down in this area. Um, so this is going to go away now that it's November, but what I did, and I wish I had thought of this sooner and I didn't, I didn't think of this until kind of the last night that I was working on it, but um, this is good like zoom stitching when we have our stitchy zoom calls. Um, I often don't stitch on them because I don't know. I just, I'm not a really good zoom stitcher <laughs> to be honest, especially when like you're kind of the host. It just feels like I have a, you know, I have to highlight spotlight people and all that stuff. Anyway, this is where I got to. So I did fill in that bottom part. I put in some more fish, this little necklace. And then I started, um, carrying over this line, uh, which is what I was saying when I wish I would have thought of this sooner because everything below this, like the stitching is done, it's this dark blue that has to be stitched around. So it's just going to be fill in around those motifs. I do have to, sorry, um, extend this a little bit. Oops. How does it go? Yeah. There's like a ship ship. The ship is sideways. You can see how the ship is drowning. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm following that mass down and I have to go up and around and all that. But otherwise, everything below it is going to be that dark blue. So I can, what I might do, honestly, is just pull this out and work on fill-in when I'm on stitchy Zoom calls. Or maybe take it, I don't know. I probably won't take it to a retreat, honestly. Maybe I will. Um... But this is good distraction stitching for the fill-in. So that's kind of my goal. Like I'm kind of, um, this one in particular, this block has a lot of, I mean, there's a lot going on in it, but there's also a lot of fill-in. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see if I even remember to do that, honestly. <laughs> but it's going to go away for now. And this is where we got where we got to. I think that 
block number five is going to take me a long time. Right now, I'm only pulling this out and working on it four days in October. That will hopefully change um, once I get past um, countdown to 50, which is trying to get 50 finishes by the time I turn 50, which I turned 50 in 2027, uh, which is still a couple years away. So, you know, and what I used to do with WIPCO is, you know, I would put these bigger projects on the WIPCO, which WIPCO was not intended to finish anything. How I use it, how I use it. You can do whatever you want with it. And I did get a little burned out with it because I had all these really big projects. But I do really miss having the big projects on it to, to pull them out, give them some love, make some progress on them. Next year, 2025, I am doing WIPCO. But I am doing more, I mean, not all of them, but doing more year of whip pieces to try to get those done. So eventually we'll get there, right? Like, we'll get there. Anyway, so that's Halloween at Hopper and Hollow, block number five for October. Then I pulled out Autumn Montage. This is my seasonal Sunday piece. This is artwork by Janet Stever, charted by Pain Free Crafts. I work on this every Sunday. And... We are, where are we? We are kind of right in this area, kind of between the two acorns, but closer, closer to this edge than that one. I've kind of randomly, very randomly, you were all here with me when I said, wouldn't it be nice if like to make it a goal to get to this acorn before it goes away for the season? So I work on this on Sundays during in season. So for us in the U.S., our seasons, I know in other places, the seasons start on the first of the month. Um, some places, I don't know where all, but for us, fall will go through December 20 something. I don't know the exact date, 21st. I think maybe winter officially starts the 22nd, somewhere around there. Um, so we still have almost two whole months to work on this. So let me show you where I got to. Let me start, ba stop babbling. Look, my acorn needle miner, isn't that perfect? Okay. So this is, so you could see, we kind of, there's a branch that goes right in here, which you can kind of start seeing coming through. We did a lot of fill-in up around here in this area. There's some stitches in here that need to be filled in. Um, but yeah, we're just kind of working our way to towards the edge there. Um, this is a long, narrow one. A lot of color changes. I did get into a area where there was a lot of color, um, the same color. So... I was able to get 406 stitches last Sunday, and I am now at 4.66% done with this whole thing. So we're getting there. Um, what I'm doing to fill in, so I would take, I would kind of use Sarah's typewriter method at a certain point, not strictly, but I would take the highest empty square and stitch that and then just take the thread wherever it went and then go up and do the next one. And that's kind of how I filled in this area. So that area is all filled in now, but now I think I need to go back down and kind of bring this area over. So we're getting there. We're getting there. I do like it. It does look really, I mean, on the camera, I mean, you know, when you're up close stitching and you're like, does this even look anything like anything? Like these are so such strange colors for it to be inside an acorn. But then when you look at it from afar, it really does. It just looks so good. So I like it. <clears throat> um, and again, this is what it will look like. And we're up here in kind of the beige colors, which is a lot. But if I can get to there, I feel like that's mm, almost halfway. Man, years. These are going to take years. But I have a plan for that. Okay, so that was on a montage. Then I did pull out Flower Birth Sampler, as you know. Um, I worked on it three days at the end of October. I worked on it. I was able to stitch a little bit during trick-or-treating. I was not planning on it. I had nothing on my calendar um, to stitch for trick-or-treat because, like, my, my house. So where I'm at in my house is I'm in my living room. Um, it's, like, open concept. So over this way it's and remember it's reversed so it's actually to my left it looks like I'm pointing right but to my left is the little dining area in the kitchen and then 
this way is like my backyard and it has the slider doors and windows. There's tons of windows down here, which is why I love this. What I'm facing, like I am facing the back of my couch and my TV and the side street. And um, there's a really long hallway. So like everything, I'm at the back of my house. There's a really long hallway from this room to the front door. And it's just a hallway. Like, you know, there's a garage, there's a half bath, whatever. Um, so it's hard for me to like, so when I'm stitching, I have to like, and somebody rings the doorbell, I have to quick, like set down my stitching, stop my timer and like run down the hallway <laughs> to get to the trick or treaters. I thought about like, well, I could just sit outside. And if it had been not as rainy, I probably would have sat outside. Um, but it was very rainy and, and chilly and I live on a hill so it's often very windy so it would I would not be able to stitch but I did get some stitching in um so anyway my whole point is flower birth sampler is officially done so this is another finish um so I did not I just finished it last night I had to pull it back out and work on it a couple hours last night so it's not um ironed at all and I apologize it really needs to be ironed so here it is. I did cover up just for um, privacy reasons. I covered up the name. It was very hard um, to do the name. So the baby's name is, her first name is long. Her middle name is very short. This chart, what did I do? I did the birthday and the year. And I did the... Not the time she was born, but the um, the weight. I really wanted to fit in the time, but I couldn't fit it in unless I had like completely recharted it all. And as it was, I had a really hard time. A lot of stitching the name because you can see it's not like a square in here. It's curved at the top, curved at the bottom. I left out the butterflies. There is another one hiding under this paper. See? Um, I, there's supposed to be three on butterflies on each side. I don't think it, I think it would look too crowded because her name goes from here all the way over. You can see it ends in an A, <laughs> um, but <clears throat> it's just, it's just, it's almost like a circle shape. So it was really hard for me to, you know, I'm not a professional designer. So it was, I drew it out on graph paper, which was not helpful. And then when you stitch it, it looks different. And then I had to like pull out stitches. So I felt like a lot of times I was putting in a letter, pulling it out, putting in a letter, pulling it out. Um, and then especially down here with her birth weight, like these, you see how these are kind of curved? It looks great, but like it really messed up my spacing for, I also probably didn't take enough time to plan it all out and stuff. But anyway, it really messed up my spacing. It looks kind of funky, but also I think it, here, I'll just show you the birth weight. You won't be able to identify her by her birth weight but I think it looks cute because the whole thing is kind of like charming and cute right so you can see six pounds four ounces like it's not perfect Let's see you can kind of see it there um it's not perfect by any means but I think they'll love it um and that's done look at that it was a lot of work this one um so I need to I need to iron it and get it to the framers because baby is turning one on uh, the 11th of November. Okay, so that's Flower Birth Sampler. It is by Historical Sampler Company. It is a PDF, so unfortunately I can't give it away, but highly recommend it. It's a beautiful chart. It took me 53 hours in total to work on it. Um, I stitch it on a 32 count pastel lilac linen. It's kind of hard to see, especially on camera. Um, it almost looks like a light pink in person, but it's lilac. I don't know. It's just looking as white. But um, I started it on January 4th of this year, um, and I finished it November 1st of this year. And I stitched it for my friend's baby. And she just recently sent me some pictures of the baby. And, um, oh, my gosh, the baby has dark, curly hair, and um, it, she is the happiest-looking baby ever. I have not met her yet in person, but... Anyway, so I'm super excited about that. That is finish number 10 for Year of Whips. Um, finish number 10 for Year of Whips and finish number 10 for Countdown to 50. So I'm one-fifth of the way there. 
and I have two years, a little over two years, to get the other 40 done. <laughs> oh, it's fun. Um, this also counted for this month's Magazine Monthly Challenge acrostic is by foot. And so I counted this for the Y in by foot. Why Candy, the 614 stitcher, uses Y for a year of whips, which makes way more sense than what I did, which is... Um, year born because this is a birth sampler for the year that she was born, even though it's a year after she was born, but it's for the why and by foot for year born. So that's everything I stitched on. Um, I don't have a ton of haul. I do have this shirt. This is the Jingle Ball 2024 shirt. It's long sleeve. I got it. I went up probably one or two sizes. I can't remember now what size is it. But I went up a size, so, partly because I never know how the sizing works. And with things like these, you can't return them if they don't fit. But also what I wanted was I wanted a big oversized, um, it's big. <laughs> it's almost like a dress. Um, and I'm wearing leggings with it. And it's exactly what I wanted because I'm doing Jingle Ball. And it's perfect for sitting around stitching. Uh, so it's the swan I love it. It's very cozy. It's long sleeve. Um, I don't have a ton of long sleeve like t-shirts. So this is great for sitting around the house. So I got this and then I got an email from um, the lovely Margaret. Ugh, I just saw a piece of fabric sitting on top of a pen and the pen was open. So I think it's okay though. We're okay. Um, Margaret, who has sent me a care package in the past, um, sent me an email saying, because I did a flip through of the World of Cross Stitching November issue, and there were some Scandinavian pieces in there, and, um, you know, we are, my um, background is Norwegian. Um, well, we, we pretend we're more Norwegian than we are. <laughs> we're from the Midwest. There's a lot of Scandinavians in the Midwest. And my hair, I do this because I wash my hair this morning. It's still a little damp. But I have that really thin Norwegian hair that dries really fast. So <laughs> anyway, so she sent me this chart. She's like, have you seen this chart? Um, I'm going to insert a picture here. It is beautiful. I love it. She's totally an enabler. Um, she sent the email a few days ago, and I just saw it this morning. So I'm sorry, Margaret, but I emailed you twice um, about it. <laughs> um, I bought it. Um, it is full coverage. Mm. So I said, oh, that's gorgeous. I'm going to go buy it when I read like Margaret's email. And so then I clicked the link. <laughs> I'll link it down below. It's full coverage. It has 200 DMC colors. I know what you're saying. Like, Carolyn, didn't you just like give up a piece? Um, what was it? A stitch in time? No, that's not what it was. What was it? Stitcher's the bookshelf one by, by uh, Amy Stewart. Not Amy Stewart. Yeah, Amy Stewart. You know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, my brain. I need more coffee. <laughs> anyway. Um, yes. Uh, I did give it up. But I love it. And it's so pretty. And it's all blues. <laughs> Margaret said, I know you said you wanted to stitch something for your parents. Which is true. I do. I don't know if I'm going to give my parents a full coverage. I mean, I love them. We'll see. Um, I bought it. I did email her, uh, the designer, who, so the shop is called PDX Glow. PDX is the airport code for Portland, uh, Oregon, near where I live. And so I emailed her, I said, is this pattern keeper of, um, compatible? And she said, some are some, she said, the ones that have black and white in it are pattern keeper compatible. The ones that are only color, which the chart I bought is only color, she said, you may have to input the DMC colors. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm like, or I'll just use it in Goodreader. Like either way, it's fine. Uh, it's not going to deter me from not buying that chart. Um, but she has so many pretty charts. So take a look. Um, blame Margaret because I'm 100% blaming Margaret for this. Um, I don't know when I'm going to start it. I don't know when I'm going to finish it, but um, I love it. It's such a peaceful, it would look so pretty in my house. <laughs> It's such a peaceful piece. So watch for that coming at some point in time because I don't have enough full coverage on my plate. Mm. Um, and I know there's some that Cardinal Cottage. Don't we miss that one? Yes. 
Um, why do I like the, I'm cursed to like the big, big pieces. I still have Christmas at Hot Rock Grand Hollow. I mean, Halloween, which we saw at Hot Grand Hollow. Autumn at Hot Grand Hollow, which has four out of 12 squares done. I have a couple of long dogs. I mean, why do I like the, the big pieces? I'm trying to be better about that. But man, there's just something really relaxing about this piece. So Margaret, thank you, I think, for showing it to me. But she has a lot of great pieces. She is in the Portland area. Um, actually not very far from me. So that was just kind of, she's like, yeah, I, I, cause I asked her, I was like, Oh, judging by your name, it seems like you're in the Portland area and she is. Um, so take a look, you know, have fun purchasing and, um, we'll go from there. So I did get that. And then my t-shirt, that's really all I have. I know some stuff is coming in the mail. Um, like my floss of the month club, I think it's supposed to be delivered today, but the mail isn't here yet. So that's all. Okay. Let's do giveaways. Okay, we have giveaways. So for so for giveaways, um, okay. So well, this one we gave we gave away our hearts because I finished this last time, and I'm ready to pass on the pattern. Um, this one, the winner is makes stitches. So makes stitches. Can you please email me your address at czookstitch at gmail .com. It is listed in the description box below, in case you missed that. Uh, but I need your address to send that out. And then a lot of you really like this one. It is super cute. It is so cute. I love these little chickies. The winner of this is Denise Gray. Denise, I think you have another winning from a few weeks ago that I haven't mailed out yet. So I will put this in the same package for you. So you'll get two charts, I think. Either way, I'm pretty sure I have your address anyway. So, okay. This week, so it's November. And I've been holding on to these and, um, okay, we're going to do calendar giveaways. That's our theme because we're thinking about 2025. Um, and as a reminder, we have a zoom call coming up. I think it's November 14th, whatever that Saturday is at 9am Pacific standard time. So in the U S except for Arizona, <laughs> we fall back an hour this weekend. I think, some places did it last weekend. It's very confusing. Um, we fall back tonight or tomorrow morning at 2 a.m. So we get an extra hour of sleep, which is fantastic. Um, it will be darker earlier, which I don't mind, um, but it will be lighter in the morning. Um, so that is what's happening. Okay, so the first two calendars I'm going to give away are not calendars you can necessarily use as calendars next year, but they're still really cute. Let me explain. These are open internationally. I will ship them anywhere except for one, and I'll talk about that. But um, the first three I'm going to show you, I'll ship internationally. Um, don't say giveaway or anything like that that would attract trolls because we, on Facebook, we're getting trolls. We're getting, you know, we've had issues here if you've been with me for a while. If, if ever it looks like I have... <laughs> said, send me a telegram or something like that is a spam. I will not ask you to send me a telegram. Okay. Um, anything that, that was a common, um, scam that was going around a couple years ago or last year or something where it was like, send me a telegram at this. I'm like, no, I'm not going to ask you to send me a telegram. Okay. Okay. Let's get into it. So the first giveaway, this is Teddy Teddy calendar. So this calendar is from September, 2019 to December, 2020. But um, why you would want this is because there are six really cute charts in it with the teddy bears. Look at that one. Isn't it cute with all the flowers and the grill? Look at the grill. So that's that's why I'm giving this away. <laughs> um, I think we gave this one away one other time. I probably found this on the um, a freebie table or something, or maybe I've just held on to it. It's cute. So you get the six charts in here. And I mean, if you want to use... A 2020 calendar. I mean, 2020 was not the best year for anybody anywhere in the world. But the charts are cute. So if you would like this, say Teddy, T-E-D-D-Y, Teddy, open internationally. Very cute. The next one is uh, a 2022 calendar with these six charts inside. And look, they kind of take you through the year. It's really cute. Look at that with the teacup. It's so cute. And the Christmas and this, the little gift. 
the guitar, the air, well, it's not an air guitar, it's a real guitar. It's darling. Um, so if you would like this one, also open internationally, say friends, friends, plural, with an S. And you'll get all six charts inside the calendar. Okay. Now this next one, also open internationally, you can actually use it as a calendar in 2025. I, um, I think I showed this. This came free when I um, re-upped my subscription for the world of cross-stitching. There are six charts by Emma Congdon in here. Um, there are like words of affirmation. They're really cool. This one says no rain, no flowers. I love that one. Um, squeeze the day. That one says with the lemon, look at all that yellow stitching. Um, but I love the bright colors of this. Um, so if you want, oh, here's a better picture on the back actually, where you can actually see what you're getting here. So you get those six charts in here. Again, this is open internationally. And if you want to win this, say the word lemon. And it's because of the, I couldn't figure out because like affirmation is, it's too hard for us to spell. Let's be honest. So I did it by the big picture on the front there. So lemon for this one, lemon. Okay. This next one, unfortunately, has to be U.S. only just because of the weight of it. This is um, Lori's The Cross Stitchers Planner for 2025. I love this planner. I did, um, a few weeks back, I did do a, not a full flip through, but I talked about it at length. Um, this is a fantastic planner. The only reason why I'm not using it myself is because I already have my planner for next year. Um, but I am definitely... Um, so I, I use a two-year planner, and so I am definitely going to, um, after I'm done with 2025, I'm definitely going to, I'm hoping she's still going to, Lori, um, you got to keep doing these now because you're getting us hooked on it. Her friend painted, did this painting for the cover, which I think is beautiful. I want that to be a cross-stitch piece, but I'm giving this away, um, Unfortunately, it has to be U.S. only because it's just, it's so thick and it is heavy. It's really well made. Um, if you would like to win this, say planner, P-L-A-N-N-E-R. You can also get this if you don't win it. In the U.S., you can get it through Colorado Cross Stitcher or Lori by Crazy Life. So there's her information. Go to her Etsy, which is my Crazy Life, no spaces on Etsy, and you can buy these. Or you can get them on from Colorado Cross Stitcher. If you are in Canada, you can get them from Evertote. If you are in the UK, it's called the Something Rabbit. Does that ring a bell? I'm so sorry. I can't remember the name of the UK place. Let me see if I have it written down. I have my little... Does anybody do this? Like I have a bunch of like notes. <laughs> it's, it's super... Um, cough syrup. <laughs> it's super productive, isn't it? It's a great, like literally, these are like my notes. These are notes. Um, okay, no. Well, I won't spend a lot of time looking for it, but anyway, it's, oh, here it is. Evertotes in Canada, the patchwork rabbit. The patchwork rabbit, huh? See, I had it. The patchwork rabbit in the UK is also where you can get it. But um, this one will be shipped, um, just U.S. only, uh, unfortunately, um, and planner if you would like to win this. And I will get those out to you so you can start planning for next year. Okay, so those are the giveaways. Fun, right? I'm super excited. I am already thinking, planning for next year. I'm so excited. Okay, plans for this week. Um, 25-7, I am going to remember tonight to pull out Happy Christmas Buck. I know I showed this last week with my November plans. Um, this is in just cross stitch December, 2018. And I started this last year for Dina's birthday from half stitch cross stitch. And we have the rear done. There is some back stitch that still needs to be finished, but this will be my 25, seven piece for this month. And hopefully we'll get it done because this is on my year of whips. Oops. I don't think you can tell by the chart. So that's on my year of whips. The other one that's on my year of whips, which I'm going to give three days, I think, this week, is Christmas Elf Fairy by Mirabilia. I started this with Candy, the 614 stitcher. I know that she's also been working on it. Um, this is where I'm at. 
the fabric I think is by the Primitive Hair and it's like a snowflake fabric. So um, this is going to get a lot of love this month. It's going to get three days this week, but I have some other slots because um, I do want to try to finish this this year as well because it's on my year of whips too. So I do think, I think I can get three more finishes before the end of the year. Happy Christmas Buck, Christmas Elf Fairy, which both will count for year of whips, and that will be 12 out of the 16. So I have 16 on my year of whips list. And if I can get those two done, that will be 12 that I got done, uh, which I'm already over half of what I said I would finish. So I can still enter, I can enter the, um, what, you, what do you call it? The giveaway. So yay. Um, and then because it's Veterans Day on the 11th, I believe, and voting day on, um, it's election day on Tuesday, I am pulling out One Nation uh, by Bygone Stitches. This also counts for uh, the Magazine Monthly Challenge. I know this isn't a magazine piece, but the Magazine Monthly Challenge, the theme is through the neighborhood. And I'm saying that my nation is a really big neighborhood. <laughs> That's how I'm making that fit. Um, so this will get three days this week as well. So that is where I'm at. I have a long ways to go. I got I want to work on that field of stars more. It's beautiful, but man, it, it takes a lot to do each one of those field of stars. It really does. Um, and then, of course, I'll be working on Autumn Montage uh, on Sunday. Tonight, I am working on Christmas Elf Fairy, so that will be fun to kind of pull out and remember where I was and all that good stuff. Um Otherwise, I think that's everything. So I hope you're doing well. And um, we'll be putting away Halloween this weekend and pulling out some, I don't know. I don't really have Thanksgiving decor. I have one turkey. He's been sitting out. Um, but we'll see what we come up with. Maybe more winter. We'll see what we come up with. Um, and yes, I am very excited to decorate for Christmas. And it's probably going to be sooner rather than later. So, all right, my friends. I hope you have a great week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.